Welcome back for round three of Bones. Yay, no bones about it, best unit. Bones, bones, bones. Fantastic. So we are going to be looking at the rest of the axial skeleton in this video, starting with our vertebral column. Now there are seven vertebral vertebrae in the cervical region. That's right. Which seven. is why these are called the cervical, cervical vertebrae. vertebrae. Hey, now up here at the top we have two special cervical vertebrae, our atlas and our axis, or C1 and C2. We'll look at those individually in a moment. Now as we follow the cervical down, we hit our thoracic area. So there are 12 of these. are the 12 thoracic vertebra, which each of these is going to touch a rib, meaning we have 12, 12 ribs. So as we move down from the thoracic, we'll hit the lumbar region. Yeah, sometimes I need a lumbar support down here. Big lumbering lumbar vertebrae, they're very large. Now there are only five, five. of these. Mm -hmm. So these five vertebrae are then going to be connected with our last little part, which is basically the tail on a human. Hey, we have the sacrum and the teeny tiny little coccyx, coccyx, which is our tailbone, which hurts a lot when you fall down and break it. Okay, so if we look at each one of these vertebrae, we're going to focus in on the thoracic here, and we're going to look at these parts. So what you can see with these vertebrae, they're all stacked on top of each other pretty nicely. So you can see the superior articular facet, is going to be touching the inferior articular facet of the vertebrae above it. Because these are going to allow nice support for our um, spinal cord. Now we also can see two big pointy pieces coming off of our vertebrae. The spinous process, which will be on the back side, going all the way down. And we can find that on the pointy spine of our back. Yep, you can feel this. Now we can also see the pointies off to the side if we look straight on here. These are called the transverse process and they are going to touch the ribs, at least in our thoracic cavity. So if we spin this guy around, we can look at the thoracic cage. Now this is still going to be part of our axial skeleton and it's going to consist of each rib and the sternum. So the ribs are divided into three categories. Yep. The first seven are going to be our true ribs. So you go all the way down to the first seven. Now notice each one of these is going to touch the cartilage that leads straight to the sternum. Yeah, it's a direct connection. And what is this cartilage? This is costal cartilage, Which and it's hyaline. Hyaline yeah, cartilage. Yeah, very cool. Okay. Now as we move down to the rest of the ribs, ribs 8 through 12 are considered false ribs. Right, now, three of these, which are really hard to view, I guess, uh, these three are just false ribs. Right, they are not going to, actually, so this, these three mm -hmm. are going to not be connected directly to the sternum by cartilage, but will be held in place. Now, these last two down here, you can see I always miss this one. It's all little. Little baby. <laughs> these are our false floating ribs. So these are floating. They are not attached to anything on the other side. They're just hanging out. Hanging out. Floating around. <laughs> now, if we look at the sternum, we can see that there are three little piece, piece, pl bl 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 There are three pieces. <laughs> this kind of looks like a man's tie, don't you think? A little bit, I think so. Which I think ties into the name of the top piece, which is called the manubrium. <laughs> so the manubrium of the sternum is going to be the top part that touches rib number one and the clavicles. So you see both clavicles come together up here. Now the next portion here is the body. The body is the big part. Yep. And at the bottom we have another teeny little thing called the, the xiphoid, xiphoid process. process. Um, and this little part easily breaks off during CPR many times. Hey Marsha. Hey Kareem. What is this weird little uh, bone up here? What is this bone? It just looks like it's a mini jaw. 
Because he's missing his jaw. Poor Herman is missing his jaw. Wow, so jaw dropping. This experience. little guy is a bone that is very commonly broke when people get strangled. Oh boy. It's called the hyoid bone. Wow. So if you've ever watched CSI or SVU or any of those shows and they talk about people getting strangled, they often talk about this bone being broken. Oh, well, you learn something new uh, every day. Right? <laughs> and this is actually attached to our tongue and helps give us a lot of support for it talking. It like staples our tongue in place. It's yeah. like a tongue. Right. Stable. It's a tongue staple. It's a tongue that staple. can be broken when you're strangled. Hey, so. I got another question well, for what's you. What's up? What else? Do There's we, got? A, we, we stuck a red we pipe did, cleaner. We did, and I totally blew it off, didn't I? No, but we're coming back. All to right, it. red pipe cleaner. Tell us the story. So this red pipe cleaner is in between two vertebrae. So it's inter vertebral and it's demonstrating a hole, right? Because that's what we use our pipe cleaners for. So this red pipe cleaner is running through what we call the intervertebral foramen. So it's the hole in between the two foramina. And this is where our spinal nerves will exit our spinal column. Pretty cool, hey? Yeah, I think it sounds good. Hey, I think we covered just about everything. I think we got everything. everything on there. Now we want to really quickly look at each individual vertebrae. We got so we have three different types of vertebrae, right? The cervical, which looks a lot like a mosquito. Mosquito. You can see it has the pointy pr 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 proboscis. Uh, proboscis. I can't say that. It, and that is going to represent the spinous process on our vertebrae. One of the other ways I identify this guy is if you look straight down on him, he's the only one of the three that has three holes. So he has the um, vertebral foramen and the transverse foramen that are going to allow arteries, veins, and nerves to exit and enter the skull. So as we move to the second one, this is our giraffe. Yep. Our giraffe is going to represent the thoracic. thoracic. So we have 12 of those. 12 of these guys. And on this one, you can also see some of those other parts really well. The mm -hmm. superior articular facets, the inferior articular facets. You want to turn it over. Turn them over. And those guys there. So inferior articular facets. The spinous process. Spinous process. The transverse process. Transverse. And the body. The body. The body. You know what else? What? These guys have a heart-shaped body. They do have they a heart. They do. Body. And vertebral foramen. Cool. Okay, so now let's move on to our last guy, our big lumbering moose. Totally looks like a moose. So this is our big moose that represents those five lumbar vertebrae. And again, you can see the superior and inferior articular facets, the spinous process, the transverse process. And the body, or the we'll go with the foramen first. There you okay, go. the vertebral foramen and the body. Fantastic. Now, the last thing we need to show you on this section is going to be those two top vertebrae on the cervical, C1 and C2. So these are the atlas, which supports the head, and the axis, which is going to help us rotate the atlas. Okay, so the atlas is what's going to help us say yes, and the axis is going to help us say no. Now the way that these articulate is on a little piece that's called the dens. dens. Now it's kind of hard to see from here. If we take this off, you can see that there's a spot that sticks straight up from our atlas. I think that is it for the rest of our axial skeleton. I think we hit it all. And we are ready to move on to arms and legs. Good luck, gang.